Hello, this is Ben, and I'm going to be leading you through some training on setting up a document library or a place to keep documents within Office 365. Um, I've been doing some testing, some trials, and determining kind of the best way to set things up. Uh, am I certain that this is the absolute best way you could ever find? No, but this is a pretty good way that I've found so far to be able to best leverage the use of Office 365. So uh, it, let's say that this is our, our department site that we're on. We have permission to be able to make a document library. Um, and the benefit of making a document library over just adding a new folder in an existing document library is that we can, it makes it a little easier to set permissions um, and we can add custom columns or metadata to that document library, whereas we can't add new columns to a folder. So I'm going to go up here to this gear icon in the top right hand corner and go to uh, add an app. Um, that's what they call them inside of Office 365. I'm going to add a document library and I'm going to title it um, guest, guest services. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to title it just GS, uh, GS Docs. Um, and I will, after I create it, it's going to uh, appear here in the site contents and I'll be able to go in and click and click settings uh, that short name is going to allow it to uh, you know appear as short in the the URL um, but then I can always go to this list name and description let me show you that again uh, list name description and navigation click on that and change that from GS Docs to something a little more meaningful Let's say guest services documents and then I'll, I'll, I'll click yes display this document library in the quick launch which will put it over here not just in the recent but actually as part of this permanent list click save we'll see it now appear here instead of GS docs and recent it's now guest services documents I'll click on that to go back to the main library now let's say uh, I want to classify my documents um, in this library by job title. Uh, let's say in guest services we've got two major job titles. We've got um, guest services specialists and we've got case managers. Well let's let's do that. Let's learn how to to make classifications um, and, and the reason that I want to classify it um, using a column instead of just a folder uh, I'll, I'll illustrate this to you real quick. Folders take longer to move around in online. So for example, let's make two folders. Let's make um, GS Specialist and then let's make another folder for CM. Okay, well, I guess I could put Case Manager. Case manager. Now, every time I want to go in and out of one of these, I have to click and then it reloads and, and sometimes it's faster than others this time it's actually quicker so then now when I want to go back up I have to click up here at the top to move back and then go to guest services specialist and, and when you start getting lots of documents in here it can take a little bit well these these folders are useful for if I if I am not online if I'm looking at my documents um, if I've got them for example synced to my local computer which I can do I can do that through this uh, OneDrive for Business app it allows you to put SharePoint uh, libraries actually on your local computer and then when I've got it like that you know going into these folders makes sense but what about when I'm at home or when I where I don't have it synced when I'm accessing it from my mobile you know that going through all these folders could be a pain so how is there a way that we can use both folders and use uh, a, a classification column or metadata? I'll show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to library at the top and I'm going to add a new column. And I'm going to use that column in this case to specify job title. That I'll make that job title my column name. Now you might have a different uh, classifications. You might just want to put something more general, like just section, you know, uh, or classification, and just have 
different classifications or sections. You might have multiple columns. Right now, I'm just showing you how to put one, let's say, job title. Uh, I'm going to make it a choice, which will basically build a drop down menu. That way, I can specify, you know, I only want a few different job titles to be available. I'll put that I'm going to require that this column contains information. Uh, if it will ever stop moving. Boy, it's really. Here we go. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It switched back on me. Okay, require that this column contains information. Yes. Um, and now I'm going to specify the choices. Special, GS specialist. And GS specialist. And I'll hit enter to take me to a new line. And case manager. Um, now remember what you put in this box because you're going to need to remember it when you set. Uh, default values. Um, I'll show you how we're going to use default values here in a second. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom finally and select, I'm going to clear this uh, this choice, this default value from this point and I'll put default values somewhere else. Click that X to clear that. We'll just leave the default value blank. Click OK. It's going to take a second, create the column and now I'm going to see it in this view here. Now let's set those default values for that folder so that anything I put in that folder will get a case manager value for job title and anything I put in this folder will get a GS specialist value. Um, let me click uh, create view, or sorry, whoops, whoops, I skipped ahead, I skipped ahead. I need to go to library settings to set the default values and then we'll create a view. So. I'm going to click um, column default value settings under library settings and it, it will it's a little confusing the interface at first it's showing you the default values for each of the columns that you've created and which can have default values um, set up uh, for each folder so right now we're in the overall library and that's why the guest services document, the name of the library, is highlighted. Uh, and so there's no default value for job title for the overall library. Now let's click down into case manager and let's set the job title. Now we see we can we we see that we've changed by having the case manager folder now highlighted. Let's click on job title to change the default value for that column. Now remember I told you you're gonna need to remember um, the name of the column because if I put you know CM in here and try and click OK it's gonna say the default value for a choice column must be chosen from among the specified choices well it would have been really nice if they just gave you a drop-down menu here so you could actually choose from the specified choices they don't uh, Microsoft you know every now and then they, they miss and this is a miss uh, I'll put in case manager yes that is now one of the default values or one of the specified values that allows it. I see it pop in here. I see that it's got a, a new icon here to specify that there is a default value. And now I'm going to do the same thing with GS Specialist and add a default value there. Okay, GS Specialist. Now what what's the benefit of adding a default value for these for this column? for each folder is when I go back to, I'll click settings to go back to settings, guest services documents, go back to guest services documents. When I upload my documents, um, I've got a couple, you know, a couple test documents here. I can just drag it and drop it and it's automatically going to get the value for that column placed in there. I don't have to then go in and add that value, although I could by going up to library and quick edit, I could easily add in those values after the fact. So if you didn't do this, you could still add them in after the fact. Um, it puts it into kind of an Excel spreadsheet type thing. Let me show you real quick. Quick edit, um, it puts it, like I said, into an Excel spreadsheet where I can easily go be able to, if I wanted to change this to GS Specialist, uh, I could do it and then 
quickly drag it down just like another a normal Excel formula. And I'll change it back. And I'll click stop editing. It's going to say we're working on it. Bam, change is saved. Now let's go upload my GS specialist documents. Okay, so we've got our documents up, but we still got these folders. So now we've got folder and now we've got folders and we've got metadata. So we really haven't fixed the folder problem. Well, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go up here to library and I'm going to uh, create a view. Um, and I will put, uh, let's see, I'll start from my all documents view. Start from an existing view, all documents. It'll take a second, say working on it. Then it'll take me to the create view. I'm going to name this view grouped, and you'll see why in a minute. And I'm going to make this the default view. Um, I'm going to keep it a public view so that everybody can see it. I'm not going to show a uh, job title here um, if it will ever stop moving on me. I'm not going to show, wow, this is job title because I'm going to group by job title. I'm not going to sort, I'm not going to filter, but I could. I am going to group by. I'm going to group by uh, my job title. And you'll see and that'll provide a functionality that's going to be a lot like folders. Now I go down from group by to folders, this folders option, and I'm going to show all items without folders so that I won't have to go and click through the folders. Now I'll click OK. It's going to make it, and bam. Now I've actually got this kind of the same functionality, but instead of having to reload every time uh, I, I open or expand and collapse these, uh, it's real quick. But I still have my folders functioning in the background. So if I click Sync and I synchronize this to my computer, and if you don't already have the OneDrive app, there's a link down there. Uh, there's a link to allow you to be able to get it. But when I click Sync, and this is going to be real quick because there's nothing in those documents. Um, click Show My Files. I've, I've got these folders still that I can use, I can take advantage of, to be able to quickly uh, still have that classification um, on my local computer when I'm looking at it in the synced version. So that's that's a real quick lowdown on how to intelligently create your document library to be useful both synced and up in the cloud. I hope that helps.